Well, hey folks, I'm Josh. Welcome back to my shop. This is the first episode of Sack Whittling. Swiss Army Knife Whittling. And if you don't know what I mean by that, I made an intro video. You can go check that out. I'll be sure, I will be sure to include the link up above. Today on Sack Whittling, we are going to make uh, beads or toggles, whatever you want to call them, I guess. And um, you can make them of all different sizes and designs and colors and all kinds of stuff. I have a whole bowl of random little beads that I've made here. And, um, I mean, you know, just to look at these briefly, it's not a terribly complicated thing, but there's a couple of things you can do that would make it, that make it easier. Um, and so I thought I would share how I go about making a bead and um, some little tips and tricks on where to find wood and stuff like that. So um, we'll get these out of the way. The thing that makes this particularly easy is if you can find a piece of wood that is pithy. And when I say pithy, I mean, so like this is a, I believe this is a bit of ash uh, from an ash tree. And if you look, the pith of the wood is, is right here in the center of the pith. It's the dead part. And um, on a tree that we would call pithy, that is soft. And you see that? You can just push it in, like it just super soft, um, as opposed to the wood around it, which is nice and hard. Now, if you can find a piece of pithy wood, this is super easy because you don't have to figure out how to put a hole in it. You just have to figure out how to poke a hole in it. And if you watch my intro video, this is just a bamboo skewer. Um, and that's why I keep it in my kit because you know, I like to make beads when I have you know, a couple minutes to kill or whatever. Um, so you need some way of pushing the pith out. Um, and I got a little video of uh, finding some pithy wood on an ash tree that I'll show you here. This guy right here is a dead ash tree. It was killed by emerald ash borer in uh, the back of my yard. And you can find any of the small branches will be pithy. There you go. See how that's all white in the middle there? That's the spongy pith of this branch that I just broke off from that ash tree. So now that's a normal branch growing out of the tree right there that I broke that off of. But um, when the ash trees get damaged, they grow these epicormic branches. And that's because when they get damaged up higher up, these sprout out of the bark and they look a little different. So like normal branch, down here is another normal branch. But these epicormic branches grow up and curve more and have a little bit different look to them. I found that the epicormic ones have even bigger pits because they grow so fast. So sometimes these are nice to use when you need a bigger hole. Anyway, if you have ash trees around you, uh, they're probably dying and nobody's gonna frown if you snag a couple branches off of a dead or dying ash tree. There are lots of other trees and bushes and shrubs and stuff that have uh, pithy centers that are soft and you just kind of have to explore. When you're trimming a tree in your yard or you happen to see a branch on the side of the road or whatever, go over and cut a piece or, or, or snap a piece off and kind of probe to see if the center is all soft. Um, and then you'll know, hey, I have a piece of wood that'll work well to make beads with. So this works best if you have a piece of wood that is still a little bit green. It's not the end of the world if it dries a bit, but it's definitely easier to cut with a Swiss Army knife if it's a little bit greener. So for demonstration purposes, I'll work on this one. And obviously you wanna shoot for a diameter of stick that is about the size of the bead you wanna end up with, not too much bigger. So this one here is about as big around as, I don't know, my pinky? Yeah, about pinky size on that one. Uh, this one's even smaller, more like, well, no, quarter inch or so, maybe a little more. And um, so, you know, your, your bead is gonna be relatively close to the same size as that probably, unless you really wanna whittle it down. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's it's nice to have little small beads. This one's pretty small, actually. Um, there's another one that's pretty little. But sometimes you want a bigger bead. So you just kind of have to think about what you want to end up with, where you want it to be when you're done. Um, and the hole is going to be, you know, about the size of that soft pith that's in the middle there. So let's see. It's going to be about that size. Uh, and of course you can make that bigger and I'll show you some ways of doing that. Or if you can't find a pithy wood at all, you can't find any sticks that have a soft pith in the center, um, there's things you can do with a Swiss Army knife to put holes in things obviously. So I'll show you some ways of doing that too. You need a piece of wood that's long enough to actually hold on to it. Um, 
Don't don't cut yourself a tiny little bead shape to start with. You want to be able to work on it. You're going to then cut the bead off, essentially. Um, so get get something long enough to hold on to. This one is a couple feet long. But don't get in something that's, you know, so long that it's ridiculous. If you got something that's too long, just cut it down so that you have a smaller piece to work with. First thing I like to do is clean up the end. And be careful doing this cut. This would be a, a pretty common situation where you could come through the wood and come into your thumb if you're not thinking about it. Um, I never put my thumb in, the, in line with the blade. I always offset my thumb. That You have plenty of power still as long as you get used to holding your knife like that then you won't get into the habit of letting your knife come into your thumb which can be dangerous so clean off that end so you have a nice smooth bit to work with and you don't want to have saw marks in your bead and then maybe give yourself a little bit of a chamfer bevel the edge a little That looks pretty good. Now you have to make a decision. Do you want to try to leave the bark on or do you want to take it off? Uh, for this one, I think I'm going to try to, I think I'm going to take it off. So I'm going to do that now. Just going to take the bark off a bit. And you also have to decide design wise at this point, or at least soon, what do you want it to look like? Do you want a round bead? Do you want a square bead? Do you want some kind of design or shape to it? Uh, of course, the sky's the limit but you're going to want to do most of that type of work before you separate your bead from your from your handle essentially so think about that at this stage so now think about how long you want your bead to be obviously longer shorter clear more bark or not and then um, i'm going to give myself a score line to work to here and be careful you don't again push your thumb into the blade here Ooh, and I got a little bit off center, so let's fix that. Now I like to do this because when you go in to cut this off with the saw, it's nice to have a little bit of a, a sh shelf, I guess, to say, uh, to set the saw into so that you have a nice clean uh, spot. And also it means that it's a little easier to clean up the end because you've already done a little bit of that. So all I do is give myself a line there and I just make small stop cuts. And if you for some reason didn't have a saw on your Swiss Army knife, you could continue doing this essentially. Just keep making stop cuts and eventually you'll cut through the bead, uh, cut through the stick and you won't have to have a saw. It takes a long time though, at least relatively speaking. Um, so it's quicker if you give yourself a place to start here. And you could just cut this off, but then you have to clean the ends up um, because when the saw comes out, it's pretty hard to have a clean clean cut with a saw on a Swiss Army knife um, unless you like come at it from both sides it's totally doable but this is just easier in my opinion all right so probably the easiest way to saw with a Swiss Army knife is to put your stick down on a stump or log or something and then put your foot on top of it and get your foot about as close to where you want to make your cut as you safely can and have that overhanging the edge of your log or stump um, I'm not outside right now. It's blazing hot here, which, you know, at least to me, it's blazing hot. It's 90 some degrees outside and I don't, I don't really like it when it's that hot. So, uh, I'm sitting in my shop where it's still cool cause I'm haven't opened it up yet and I'm still, still a little bit more comfortable in here than I would be outside. So, um, I don't have a stump or anything in here really to stand on and it's hard to rig the camera for that. So what I'll do instead is this is just a bench hook um, that is on my bench and it's clamped in so it can't go anywhere and I will just use it uh, to make my cut. And actually I'm gonna take one of those off because it's in the way of my bench. There we go, now I have to push that up to there. So anyway, give yourself something to cut against. And I, again, like I said, ideally you're gonna stand on this but I don't have a good place to do that and still be able to film it inside here. So. I'm going to push it up into my bench stop, and to get the saw started, I'm just going to do pull cuts, and then once I get going, I'll actually start sawing. So now you might think, well, how's he going to do that? So if you remember, little bamboo skewer, this is where this comes in super handy. So now we've got on this side, you can still see the pith is there, but that's fine, because this, just push that right out. And then, we can use this to hold it. Uh, it. The bamboo is surprisingly stiff. 
Uh, if you don't have a little bamboo skewer like this, you can you can just use you know any old solid piece of wood that you have whittled down to a to a taper. Um, but bamboo works. I, I mean, these are just from chopsticks or or skewers like from the kitchen. I keep a bunch of these in my shop all the time, so I keep that in my in my kit so that I'm ready to go at any time. And uh, they have other uses too, but that seems to work well. So now I can I have a little something to hold on to, and you can you can do it without, but it takes some kind of funky um, grips that if you're not super comfortable with your whittling knife, it's a good way to to maybe not to do yourself some damage. So you know you could you can do this to clean this edge up, but it's not probably quite as safe as giving yourself a little something to work against. So I'm just clearing off the saw marks here and being sure that as I make this cut, all my fingers and hand are out of the way. Even if I was to hit the, um, hit the skewer and break it in this position, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to cut myself uh, no matter what happened. So that is something to think about as you're making these cuts because this could be, you know, potentially hazardous to your fingers. All right, so there you go. One finished bead. So that's probably like the easiest way of doing that. Um, of course, you can do smaller ones if you do it on a smaller stick. It just gets a little bit more tricky to do some of the final trimming on the ends, but it's not too bad. And you know, you can make you can make tiny little ones and get pretty small with them. Uh, I'm just sitting in the backyard. My uh, boys are playing in the back, so you may hear them bopping around a bit. Let's say you wanted to make a square bead. There we go. Now we're going to square off the end. So that's flat now. To make it square, you're obviously just going to cut it into a square, but I think the easiest way of doing that is to mark it. So take a look at the end of your stick here. And you wouldn't have to do the marking, of course, but it helps me to keep things straight. So there we go. Good enough for me to see what I'm doing. Check your lines, put your blade flat, cut down, and start back, go farther back from where you want the actual length of your bead to be, because, oh, I went too deep. It's okay, we'll work on that. Um, you want it to be flat to that point, so you gotta angle in, you can see it's kinda scooped here. So if I made my bead this long, well, it's flat here, but it starts to scoop back back here. So start back, you know, farther, and then work towards your lines. So this is going to be a little bit smaller because I goofed and cut too deep on that one side. But that's okay. It's pretty close to square. My hole's a little off-center. Gives it character, right? So I, I carve beads you know, whenever I got a little time to kill or I'm watching the boys or, you know, whatever, and I'm outside and I find an appropriate stick. It's, uh, I don't generally sit down and carve a bunch of them, but over time I amass quite a few because, you know, I'll whittle one and throw it in my pocket. And then I keep them in a little bowl in my shop and then all of a sudden I have tons of them. Um, now we have our square shape there and we're ready to separate off. So think about how long you want it to be. We're going to try to go for a fairly close to a actual cube. So we're going to make ourselves a stop cut line here. Be careful you don't go through the stick and into your finger at this point. Now of course I could finish this up with the saw, but I think I'm going to get a little bit better results by sticking to my knife here. When you're doing bigger beads, the saw becomes a lot more handy. And we're almost through. You can see it's pretty loose there. So we're just going to very gently make a few cuts. It's probably going to come off. You don't want to lose it. Now, if you have a flat surface to work on, this is a good time. You just set the bead down, put your knife on top, and you can just push through what's left there. Um, 
I don't I don't have a good surface that I could do that to here. So anyway, that worked out just fine. It's time for the skewer again. This is the best part. There we go. Clean this top up a little bit. And it's okay if you run into that skewer a little. The bamboo is firmer than this soft wet wood we're working on. And so you'll, you'll feel the resistance as you hit it. But still be careful that your thumb is out of the way in case your knife does go through. And, uh, you know, the, the skewer is disposable. You will eventually kind of whittle into that enough that it breaks down and you have to either make it sharpen it sharpen it a little more point it a little more or just get a new one so there you have it little cubed bead and again you're gonna want to let that dry a little bit probably and the holes a little off center but it's not terrible I could uh, do a little better job of making sure that stays in the middle but it's all right with me so let's say you have a stick that you find that you want to make into a bead that does not have a soft pith, or is not pithy. This is a bit of buckthorn. I like to use buckthorn for a project whenever it works out, because um, buckthorn is invasive, and you don't have to feel bad about taking it down. So cutting a piece of buckthorn is a service to nature. So go ahead and get some buckthorn if you got some. Otherwise, whatever you find, and um, the easiest way, I think, to make a hole in this, of course, if you're in a shop and you have a drill, use a drill because you'll put a hole in it in a half a second. But, you know, the point of these videos is that we are sack whittling and the only thing we're using is a sack, so, or a Swiss Army knife. So the awl is the tool of choice here. And you just have to be careful about, as you're working into the piece of wood, that you don't slip out of the piece of wood and give yourself, a, you know, a puncture wound obviously not what we're going for here. So the key is to kind of start slow and go from there. And if you look, it's pretty common that the pith in a branch is off center. So we're gonna to try to come back to center as much as we can. All we're gonna do here is just get that started and start working around and bringing some of that out. So we're gonna to try to kind of come this way. And if you're finding this rather difficult, um, it might help to sharpen your awl, believe it or not. It totally helps if you keep an edge on there, and these just sharpen this way. You just sharpen this one edge, and then that's pretty much it. You don't have to do anything with this other side. So they're a single bevel tool. We are working towards the center a little bit, and we're just going to kind of make our way down in there. Um, and of course, you got to work with a little bit bigger piece of wood if you're going to be doing, if you're going to be making your own holes because the you know the smallest hole you're going to be able to make is the size of the awl so you got to think about that and you wouldn't have to do this on a stick if you had like a small um cut off or something that you wanted to do this on you could you could totally do it on that you wouldn't have to use a piece of uh, wood that you found outside but i like to use natural stuff whenever possible and i think it's more likely that this is what you would be using in this type of a project you know, if you were out camping or whatever. So how are we doing on center here? Looks like we need to come this way a little bit. So this is not the fastest way of making a bead, but it's not always about doing what's fastest. So I think we're getting pretty close to far enough in here. And we'll probably end up having to clean this up from the other side as well, but that's okay. I'm gonna clean that up a little. So you can kind of, once you get in, you can kind of peel the edge off. Let's see if we can kind of get that on camera so we need to remove a little bit over here so if you get in there and you just kind of do one of these numbers the way the awl is made you can run that ride the bevel along that edge and it'll basically peel wood off and uh, that's a pretty good hole so we're gonna have to clean that up from the other side once we get this finished but uh, for now, we're gonna be done with that. Switch back to our little blade. There we go, let's square this edge up a little bit while we're here. And uh, I'm gonna take some of this bark off. I don't like the way that looks. So at this point, obviously, we're gonna think about design. We're just gonna try to, try to go basic cylinder here. I'm gonna chamfer this edge just a little bit. Now think about how long we want this bead to be. 
I'm going to get my awl back out here. For reference, I got a pretty decent hole to about there. So, just going to make a little mark. And I'm going to make that be the end of my bead. So I'm going to give myself another stop cut. Now at this point I could go saw this off with the saw, or I could just take my time do it this way, which I think we're just going to finish it up like this. At this point I'm going to go around and put those little cuts like I did on the other side here right now, and then hopefully I won't have much to do once I separate this from the handle. So there you go. That's why you keep your fingers out of the way. Broke right off. It's over there. I'll go grab it. So there we are. Now you can see the hole did not go quite all the way through. You can kind of just barely tell it's there in the end. So back to our all here. And we're starting to come through right now, you can see. So actually, I'm gonna go to the other side here. Well, you could also use this technique on a smaller, on a bead with a smaller hole. Like if you did find a piece of pithy wood that you were gonna use, you could of course make the hole bigger with the awl. Um, once you get to a certain point, it just peels the wood away. So now we're through. We can clean this up a little. Be careful that you don't squeeze too much because you'll break this and then your fingers are going to your tool, which is not ideal. So be careful. There we go. And that's got a hole big enough that you could put it around a piece of leather or some paracord or something like that. And uh, worked out pretty well. So if you want to work on this end a little more, let's say you notice that this isn't quite square. So all you got to do is make yourself a jig, get a pointy stick, stick it on the stick, just like you did with the bamboo skewer, and kind of jam it on there. Now you can work on it like that. So you can see I'm pinching the bead just to kind of hold it in place. Put my thumb behind the bead in case your knife slips out. You won't take your finger off. All right, a couple of ways to make beads. You can do all different sizes. Here we got kind of in the middle, tiny little one, much bigger. Hopefully you enjoyed this little project and there will be more sack whittling projects coming up so keep an eye out for those thanks a bunch for watching i hope you enjoyed this and uh, maybe you came up with a you know saw a little tip or trick or something that's useful like subscribe leave me a comment all that good stuff and i will see you next time thanks a bunch have a good one